The Black Widow Spider is probably the most feared arachnid in all of North America, but what you might not know is that there are many other species of widow spiders, some of which are probably only a few feet from your house right now. Today, I am joined by Spencer from the channel My Wild Backyard with one goal in mind, to find all three varieties of North American widow spider, the Red Widow, the Brown Widow, and the Black Widow, and safely free handle all three of them to test just how afraid you should really be to have an encounter with one of these animals. Our adventure starts in the expanse and isolated sand scrub habitats of South Florida in search for the rarest of the three, the Red Widow. Um, see a web. Red Widow. Widow. Yeah, Red. Come here. This is our first and rarest Widow spider in North America. This is the Red Widow. Now this is an absolutely unmistakable species. Identifying this should be no problem with that bright red coloration all around the body and the legs except for that black opistosoma or the abdominal segment with those beautiful yellowish white circles filled in with red. Nothing else like it in the entire world probably. And I'm actually gonna put this on my hand real fast. Their first defense is to drop. Just like that, there you go. Now you can see, he's handling it here right now, but uh, maybe he'll be a little bit more nervous once we talk about how venomous this creature actually is. What if I told you this spider is actually on par with the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake? See, in the lab, we can actually measure the lethal dose of venoms. And, it turned, and these guys were measured to have an identical LD50 she's active, as the Western Diamondback. But, you can see right here, her first defense is actually to scurry away and to drop, not stand and bite. See, a lot of times, spiders really don't wanna use their venom against us. Venom is a valuable resource that takes a lot of energy to create, and if she's not feeling directly threatened, she's gonna pretty much chill. However, you gotta be very careful if these spiders or other widow spiders have eggs nearby. They're extremely defensive of their nest because that nest is the next line of their genes in the environment, their DNA. And one of the biggest goals of a lot of life forms on this planet is to propagate their genes into the future. So they've evolved instincts to protect their young to make sure they have the best chance at surviving. So. This spider didn't have any eggs in her nest, and you can see that as long as we're not doing anything super, super crazy to stress her out, she'll sit right there and be extremely calm. When it comes to the toxicity of the venom, like I was saying, you know, it's not just that she's not willing to use it, it's also about how much she has. See, a rattlesnake is gonna have a considerable amount of venom if it bites you, but a spider, not so much. One venom gland of a rattlesnake can hold more venom then this spider has like body volume. So a bite from a rattlesnake is gonna have many thousands more times of venom than this spider would put into you if it did bite. But both are serious envenomation events and you gotta make sure you monitor them very carefully and uh, seek medical help as soon as possible. You heard all that, but this is actually not a species to be worried about seeing in or around your house. This is an extremely specialist species only being found in these very isolated pockets of palmetto white sand scrub habitats in central and a little bit of southern Florida. You will not find this anywhere else, even in homes in central and southern Florida. They need these scrub habitats around them because number one, they rely on that specific species of palm tree right behind us for their homes. Almost all red widow webs and nests are found in that species, the saw palmetto Serenoa repens. But two, their diet also consists largely of a lot of scrub endemic species as well, like a lot of scrub endemic scarab beetles, a lot of scrub endemic click beetles, and uh, tortoise beetles like the ones that live on the same exact species of palm tree as well. So because of all that, this is not a spider you need to worry about seeing around your house. So there's actually a couple different species of house spider that look quite a bit like this widow. See, 
The Red Widow belongs to a very large family of what we call cobweb or button spiders. They have that same kind of really big abdomen, spindly little legs, that same body plant that looks kind of like a widow, and they build those tangly, gnarly webs. And there are a few species that have a black epistosoma and a red prosoma and red legs. And looking at photos of them, if I saw them and I didn't know a whole lot about them, I'd probably think they're a red widow too. You have to watch for very specific things with identification on these spiders. They're gonna have that red spotting down the back with those yellow rings around it. And on the, on the bottom of the abdomen, they'll sometimes have an hourglass, sometimes just red triangles, um, either two separated ones or just one. But there's usually gonna be some red on the underside of the abdomen. You're not gonna see that with the uh, non medically significant house spiders. But just because this red widow cannot be found in and around houses, the other two varieties we're looking for today are. So let's head over to a nearby spot and give it a shot. Almost fell. I would have kept that in the video if you fell. The next spot we're hitting is an almost complete 180 from this isolated scrub habitat, a building where we almost immediately find our second target, the brown widow spider, at least in Southern Florida. This is the most common of the three species of widow spiders due to its ability to live in or near structures that are built by people. As they say, there is more than one way to skin a womp rat. Perfect. Perfect. This right here is the brown widow, a much more similar species to the black widow than the red widow is. So before we learn about this amazing animal, let's find a black widow first and then compare them side by side. Widow. Black widow, hold on. I got him. Got him in a tube. That's uh, well, it's the only thing out here is southern, right? Yeah, yeah should be. Yeah, southern should widow. Be. All right, so this one we have right out here is the Southern Black Widow, Latrodactus mactens. This is my lifer right here. Great find, thank you so much. And it's your first time handling a Black Widow, right? Yep, I've handled the Red Widow, I've handled the Brown Widow, but this is my first time handling the famous Black Widow spider. Believe it or not, the Black Widow isn't even a single species like the Red and Brown Widows are. In fact, there are three species in North America alone. This one I'm holding right now is the Southern Black Widow, but there is also a Northern and a Western Black Widow as well. Now you can see, identifying this should be quite easy unless you have some really dark morph brown widows nearby. Their entire body is a shiny black. Now, juveniles can have some red patterning, some white patterning, but a full grown adult will be entirely that shiny black except for that famous red hourglass that is on the underside of its abdomen and occasionally also, like on this one, a little red spot just above it. How are you able to tell, Spencer, that this is not just a very dark brown widow because that is definitely the dominant species here in South Florida? Well, first of all, you see that extremely jet black, almost like a navy blue appearance in some lighting, and that gorgeous red hourglass. It's a very, very distinctive, sharp, like stout hourglass. Where the brown widow, you'll see, has a much more elongated, almost rounded in the little, uh, <laughs> uh, the brown widow has almost a, like a rounded and orange hourglass. The, uh, the black widows, it's gonna be a very deep, saturated red. Also, the black widow, you can see even the legs, jet black, same as the rest of her body, where the brown widow is going to have a lot more banding and brown and tan on those legs. Because you do get a little bit of variation with the brown widow. With black widows, extremely dark, extremely black, with a little bit of bright red. Even if you have a very apparently dark, almost black brown widow with a more powerful red hourglass, the leg banding on the brown widow should still be a giveaway compared to the jet black, entirely black legs of the black widow. Now, 
because these are different species, their venoms are also different. So LD50 is how we measure toxicity. And basically what that means is the lethal dose of venom, where a smaller dose means a more potent venom. Now, weirdly enough, the, uh, the venoms of these two spiders might confuse you because the brown widow actually has a lower LD50 or lower, smaller lethal dose than the black widow, meaning that the venom drop for drop is more toxic. However, you're gonna have a lot more of a serious reaction if you get bitten by a black widow. And what they found in the lab is that the bite from the brown widow has a significantly smaller dosage when it bites you. Signif so much so that the symptoms are localized. A much more toxic venom, but the symptoms usually don't leave too far from where you were bitten. Where a black widow, you're gonna have systemic problems, probably you know aches and pains all over your body, headache, nerve pain, nausea, dizziness, like a really bad, painful flu. And that's because the black widow is gonna inject you with a lot more venom. With venom, you gotta remember the dosage makes the poison. So, you know, these, both of these guys are significantly more toxic than say a rattlesnake. But a rattlesnake bite is gonna be way more serious than both of these combined. And it all comes down to that toxicity and the venom dosage. Yeah, and after hearing all those Horrible side effects it sounded like a, a medicine commercial listing off those all those side effects that I might have from a black widow bite. You might be wondering, hey Mikey, why in the world am I number one? Why did I handle the two other widows? But most importantly, why on earth am I handling this black widow right here? Now, don't do this, please. One mess up while handling a black widow could land you some of those horrible symptoms you described. But but overall. These are just extremely docile spiders. You can see it is just exploring my hand. It is building a web all throughout both of my hands. Like it's just some sticks that it's building a web around. Both of these species are synanthropic, which means that they can be found in and around areas where people live. However, they are synanthropic to different degrees. Black widows prefer areas where people are living, but there's still plenty of natural cover for them. They can be found in and around houses, but they're nowhere near as synanthropic as the brown widow because the brown widow is an invasive species. They were probably brought here by humans, by accident of course, but they are so well adapted to living near humans that here in South Florida, you'll just find them underneath a mailbox or on the side of a wall at a corner at a building. You'll actually rarely ever come across brown widows here in South Florida anywhere else other than where there are people at. It's, it's unusual. I, I still get surprised when I see black widows in the wild. I'm used to seeing them in the house. Where I live in North Carolina, they're really synanthropic. Um, but, you know, I'm flipping over the, these palm fronds, flipping logs, flipping uh, pieces of bark and stuff out here. And all those places are actually really good spots where you might come across a black widow. So, it's important. an important thing to note is when you're in these guys' habitat, you know, as you can see right here, very chill, very docile spider. But if we put excess pressure on her, she will bite in self-defense. And what happens is these usually happen by accident. You're reaching into a cabinet and reaching your hand around something and the black widow happens to be hiding on the other side of that, that object. Your fingers kind of squish her a little bit and she'll bite in self-defense. And that's when a lot of these bites happen. But if you're out in the wilderness in what I call venom country where these venomous spiders live, uh, you gotta make sure you're not sticking your hands where you can't see them. See, people get so afraid of these spiders because they're dangerously venomous, they're, you know, evil monsters. Look right here, that's not a monster, that's just a little spider. And we can absolutely live alongside these creatures, but we have to learn to respect the environments that they call home and learn how to behave so that we don't have negative interactions with these animals. Perfectly said there. This right here is the exact reason why I wanted to free handle all three North American widow spider varieties. Just to show you that no matter what species it is, no matter where it is, these spiders are nothing to be afraid of. Nothing to just get randomly picked up, but still calm enough, tame enough, and just non-aggressive enough spiders to just be respected no matter where they are. Let's get this black widow right back where we found it, but the brown widow 
is uh, not going back into the wild. Yep, she's a me, part of my collection. I've been uh, starting to keep Latrodectus species myself, and this is one I've been wanting to find for a while, and bonus points, they're invasive, you shouldn't be putting them back in the environment. Yep, like, coming home with me, souvenir from Florida. Perfect. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to check out this playlist where I go into more detail about these species of widow spiders individually. Enjoy! This is the exact reason that I wanted to free handle all of the widow very. I almost said variolus. <laughs> all of the widow variolus. A little spider Freudian slip there. <laughs> all of the species of variolus, including Gigas. <laughs>